I think we've talked to uh, pretty much anyone who will listen um, about this uh, going back many years. Um, we've certainly had a lot of dialogue uh, with commission officials over time, uh, with the member states, uh, with the permanent representation in Brussels. Uh, we've talked to a lot of members of the European Parliament, our executives, uh, across the industry have been very engaged in, in writing letters and expressing opinions uh, on this. This is a fundamental piece of legislation for the industry and the crossroads. Um, so we, we've taken this very, very seriously um, and I think have put in thoughtful input into the process. Uh, and now the next phase is seeing what legislation is actually introduced at the end of the month. And at that point, obviously, uh, we will assess um, what uh, what it looks like. Is it reflective of uh, the leaked draft that was seen in January, or is it uh, is is there some improvement? Who knows? <laughs> we will see at the end of uh, the month. The legislative process in Brussels, as you know, is um, is lengthy. Um, it involves the Parliament. It involves a lot of relevant committees. It involves the Council. It involves the Commission. Uh, and so there'll be lots of opportunities to discuss uh, what we see, uh, what we like, what we would like rebalanced, um, and you know, other stakeholders will certainly weigh in as well. So that's part of the process. Um, but certainly, because this is so important to the future of the industry in Europe, one that I know the Commission considers strategic, um, you know, we'll obviously be very uh, outspoken about uh, what we see in the legislation. I think they're inherently related. Um, I think that there, there's a couple of things about the European environment that are important to understand. One is that not every country has the same economic uh, situation, right? Um, and so a, a desire to have sort of a equality or an equity across all 27 member states is, is a challenge because you have some countries that spend different amounts of money on their healthcare systems than others, and some that are wealthier than others. Um, and I realize that you know there is a sense of solidarity across Europe on these questions, but there is also a uh, big economic disparity. So that has to be taken into account. I think we also need to balance and have good policy coordination across all of these different uh, buckets. So not only from um, a regulatory policy standpoint, an environmental policy standpoint, taxation, uh, all these different elements have to be in coordination. And the reason I say that is, if there is a desire across Europe to increase um, strategic autonomy, which is a term that we've heard from Brussels, you know, beginning in the pandemic and, and continuing to today, there has to be a rational approach to how you regulate manufacturing. And um, if you make um, uh, standards so high that you can't actually produce the medicine in Europe, um, you're defeating the desire to become uh, autonomous in, in life sciences and in, in pharmaceuticals. And so there needs to be a good dialogue on that front. There needs to be appropriate balance. Um, you know, we're all facing the same, you know, energy pricing challenges, uh, geopolitical challenges, uh, healthcare financing challenges across Europe. So there's, I think, a lot of approaches that can be shared. But we also need to recognize that health is a competence of all the member states and that we need to have an open line of communication um, with our regulators for them to understand what is standing in the way of a company like Lilly um, continuing to be able to invest and make medicine in Europe, uh, but also meeting all of the needs of One Health being, uh, you know, a, a sort of an umbrella way of approaching all of these different questions. So I think the answer to your question is a complex one. I think the the goal is laudable, uh, but the, the devil is always in the details. And um, policy coordination across all of these different files is incredibly important uh, because for companies like ours, we find ourselves uh, having to uh, advocate to so many different director generals at the same time on different issues that affect our right to operate in Europe. And the more complicated and complex that becomes, the harder it is to invest 